The WGA writer's strike is shaking up Hollywood right now, sending ripples throughout the industry, halting production on too many shows to count. We're still in the early days of the strike, with so many creative decisions and business decisions still waiting to unfold. No one knows how it's all going to play out. But to get the most accurate prediction as to what's to come in the following weeks, months, and even years, all we have to do is look back to 2007, when the last writer's strike happened. The writer's strike affected different shows and even genres of shows in unique and interesting ways. Reality competition shows that don't need writers, like The Amazing Race and Big Brother, actually saw an increase in episodes. Good evening, I'm Julie Chen. Welcome to our first ever winter edition of Big Brother. A second additional season was greenlit after the strike began, with studios knowing that there would be a demand to fill time slots with original content. Same thing for The Price is Right, which started airing primetime $1 million specials out of desperation. Soap operas like All My Children, As the World Turns, General Hospital, One Life to Live, and The Young and the Restless started employing both non-union writers and scabs who broke picket lines and used pseudonyms. Now we get to the primetime scripted series, the television shows that were hit the hardest by the strike. Again, there's way too many shows to mention all of them, but I do want to highlight a few that had bizarre, unique, and even devastating effects. But first, let me thank the sponsor of this video, Bespoke Post. Father's Day is just around the corner, and if you're looking for a really cool and unique gift to give to your dad, a friend, or maybe even yourself, then you really need to go check out Bespoke Post. They're a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every month, Bespoke Post will send a box of awesome goods that's worth about $70, but you'll only pay a fraction of that. And the boxes come in a wide variety of themes, like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and so much more. Plus, you'll get to preview your box before it's shipped, so you can make sure it's something you actually want. The wonderful folks at Bespoke Post sent me a few boxes to check out, like the Weekender, which contains a beautiful mason bag that's perfect for travel, they also sent me a box called Nightcap that has lots of goodies inside, like two whiskey glasses, leather coasters, a crossword puzzle book, and a reed diffuser that smells like blood oranges and herbs. And lastly, they sent me the Canteen box that has a hedgehog lunch bag, a lunch box that fits inside, and a utensil set. My wife really loves this thing. I mean, she brings it to work with her every day. With so many items in each box, you won't mind sharing. Go check out all the unique boxes that Bespoke Post has by going to bespokepost.com slash ETE20. And when you enter my unique code ETE20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your first box of awesome. I have a link in my video description below that you can click on. Just make sure that you use ETE20 in order to get that special discount. Thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the essay. First, let's start with the casualties, the shows that died during the writer's strike or in its immediate aftermath. There were some shows that were axed immediately in the early days of the writer's strike. These were the kind of shows that were already trending toward cancellation, and the writer's strike just made the final decision for the studios. Shows like The 4400, Bionic Woman, and Cavemen. Who's Kay? Stop reading my texts. Is she nice? Yes, she's very nice. Good sense of humor? Right, yeah. Uh, just uh, give me the uh, phone. Wait, let me just... Wow. She is open-minded. Then there were the shows that were axed because of lost momentum due to the writer's strike. The Riches was cut from 13 to 7 episodes and wasn't picked up for season 2. Minnie Driver, who starred on the show, tweeted that she suspected their show was punished by the studios for how vocal they were about the strike. The popular show Prison Break was preparing for a spin-off show called Prison Break Cherry Hill that would take place inside a woman's prison, but the plans were scrapped during the strike. This is the story of a pie maker named Ned, who, since he could remember, had a gift of sorts, it was said. Two of the most heartbreaking cancellations were Pushing Daisies and Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles. Both shows already struggled with viewership numbers before the strike, but the small audiences they did have were passionate and the reviews were strong. But after both shows were cut short in season one, 
and with an extended lengthy break before season two, when the shows did finally return, ratings plummeted. Any adoration that was cultivated throughout their first seasons was lost during the extended break. And then there were the shows that didn't die because of the writer's strike, but still had to make seismic changes in the overall story that rippled throughout the series, both good and bad. Just in its fourth season, Grey's Anatomy was supposed to add Joshua Jackson to the show, but that was scrapped because of the writer's strike, and Joshua Jackson went off to make Fringe instead. Scrubs was another medical show affected by the strike. Its final season on NBC was cut short, and it almost never got the proper send-off it deserved. Luckily, ABC picked up the show after an extended hiatus and gave Scrubs a beautiful ending. You know, before tainting the entire legacy with its season 9 semi spin off, Scrubs Med School. During the long break of the strike, 30 Rock performed a live show at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater and loved the idea so much that they ended up performing multiple live episodes when the show later returned. The first being the season 5 episode, Live Show. You know, I've always loved you. <laughs> Not now, Kevin! Copy that. Seth MacFarlane completed the season 6 episode, Lois Kills Stewie, just before the strike began. It was the last episode he produced firsthand, and no new episodes were ready after that. However, Fox took the next three episodes that had already been written, voiced, and animated, and produced them without MacFarlane's input or final approval. Those episodes were Padre de Familia, Peter's Daughter, and McStroke. The betrayal by the studio not only created some of the most mediocre episodes of the season, but also hurt the long-standing relationship between them and McFarlane. Dad, this is ridiculous! I just want to talk to him! I just want to talk to him! I just want to talk to him! I just want to shoot him! I just want to talk to him! You can't shoot him! Serialized shows were hit harder than episodic shows because their storylines contained intentional season-long arcs and interwoven plot lines that were disrupted. In season four, Lost finally had an end date they were writing towards with everything mapped out, but they suddenly lost two episodes in season four that had to be shifted to seasons five and six. It could have been disastrous for a show so heavily dependent on every single episode working in tandem, Heroes was a show also heavily rooted in mythology and mysteries. Season 2 was supposed to have three separate story arcs, Generations, Exodus, and Villains, but it was cut short and certain storylines were rushed or abandoned. The show never really recovered when it returned after the strike. Even the spin-off series, Heroes Origins, that was intended to introduce new superpowered characters in standalone episodes, was cancelled in the long delay of the writer's strike. You dare touch me! You get, get away from me! You get away from me! Friday Night Lights had a tumultuous second season. It was a season plagued with ridiculous storylines like Landry murdering someone, Tim and Jason going to Mexico to find shark blood. Hang on, wait, did you just. You just said you're gonna give him a shot from a shark, dog? Julie falling for the Swede, Matt falling for his grandmother's caretaker a tornado ripping through Dylan. It really was a chaotic season full of so many poor creative choices. It's only fitting that the season and many of its plot lines were just abandoned, as the writer's strike cut the season short and left so many questions unanswered and unresolved. Maybe the only good creative thing to happen to a scripted series because of the writer's strike happened to Breaking Bad. Vince Gilligan and other writers have often talked about how the first season was supposed to end with Jesse Pinkman's death. The, the first season of, Broken, of Breaking Bad was, was obviously interrupted, shortened by the, uh, the writer's strike. You had originally intended to kill off a character in episode 9, but you only got to episode 7. I was going to kill off this gentleman right here. Thank God for the writer's strike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, writers! My original idea was to kill off Jesse at the end of the first season. To my credit, I didn't, I didn't keep that idea very long once we cast Aaron Paul. Having already served his initial purpose of connecting Walt to the drug world of Albuquerque, it was planned that Jesse's death would serve as a climax to the first season, heightening the stakes for Walt's ongoing journey. Well, thank God that didn't happen. Lastly, we come to the shows that were seemingly affected first by the strike. 
at least based on what we were seeing or not seeing on TV at the time. These were the shows that were turning around new episodes daily or weekly. And I'll tell you one thing, there's a chance now that the Writers Guild of America East and Writers Guild of America West will go on strike. Late night talk shows like David Letterman, Craig Ferguson, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, The Daily Show, and The Colbert Report all immediately started airing reruns. Same thing for Saturday Night Live. It wasn't until early January, two months into the strike, that many of these shows came back. Letterman's production company was able to successfully strike a new bargaining agreement, so his show and Craig Ferguson's returned with their full staff of writers. Dear Dave, <laughs> I don't know if you remember me or if you know who I am, but you worked very hard to get us back onto the air. And let me be the first to say, do you think you're doing? <laughs> but many shows returned without their writers. Jon Stewart changed the name of his show from The Daily Show to A Daily Show, and Stephen Colbert changed Colbert Report to Colbert Report. Subtle nods to their support of the strike. Many of these shows resumed production during the strike in a noble effort to still pay their staffs during the lengthy holdout, and while many of these shows took a severe creative dip, duh, that's why writers are so important, Conan O'Brien was able to take an awkward situation and make some of the most memorable TV moments, not only of the 2007 strike, but of his entire career. We got time, Jeff, I know we're tight tonight, but do we have time? I wanna do this, I haven't done this in a while. I wanna do another ring spin. There's a clip that's resurfaced and gone viral in the wake of the latest strike. It's Conan spinning his wedding ring on his desk, trying to beat his record time. 29 seconds. <laughs> Did you just boo me? <laughs> Over the course of the writer's strike, he did it at least a dozen times. He would tilt his desk for optimum balance. He would use a cleaning solution to make the desk more slick. Pledge, it's my choice, make it yours. <laughs> he even brought in a professor of physics at MIT to help him in his quest. And when he finally beat his record after weeks and weeks of failure, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It was magical. <laughs> From a distance, it might not seem like such a big deal, but it was emblematic of Conan's brilliance as a performer, as a writer, and it's how he saved television during the writer's strike. Late night was peak Conan O'Brien, and the writer's strike just highlighted all the aspects that made him and his show great. Following Jay Leno's Tonight Show, late night always felt dangerous. It was kind of like jazz music with its chaotic improv and experimentation, and during the writer's strike, the possibilities of what could happen during the show felt endless and spontaneous. It made you want to tune in just to see what insanity would unfold. There was ring spinning, laser light shows, zip lining down the studio to save Abraham Lincoln from John Wilkes Booth. There was a running feud between other late night hosts, Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert, that culminated in an epic late night fight. Did we settle our dispute? I don't know. <laughs> Depends on how long the strike goes. Conan O'Brien, Stephen Colbert, and Jon Stewart put on television <laughs> the stupidest <laughs> thing anybody's ever seen. The strike also allowed Conan to get out from behind his desk and lean into his natural charisma, witty intellect, and improv skills. He was able to highlight his studio in random bits, like him climbing the catwalk, venturing underneath the audience seats, showing the offices backstage. He was also able to interact with people more in bits, like when he crashed studio tours. This is absolute crap what this guy is telling you. He hasn't told you one real fact so far. When he gave one audience member money to buy snacks for the entire audience, and highlighted members of his crew, like Jordan Schlansky, who would later become a recurring character on the show. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, maybe you smell a fruit, maybe you smell dirt. Oh, I smell a fruit all right. <laughs> Bits like spinning the wedding ring were Conan just making the best of a bad situation. But his show couldn't continue like this forever. It wasn't sustainable. These mindless, moronic ideas served as a reminder to just how important writers are. 
which again is why they should be paid fairly. That strike finally ended a little after three months. And now 15 years later, here we are again with another writer's strike. If the past serves as any indication, this strike will completely kill or severely hurt a lot of TV shows and movies. No one will really know the total damage this strike has until months or even years down the road. All we can do at this point is wait and see what happens next. Anyway, pleasant dreams and uh, we'll see you around. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with your friends, like it, leave a comment below. Just in some way, engage with this video so that way it'll help motivate the algorithm gods to push this to more people so that way more eyeballs can see it. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. But even more than that, I have so many people who just time and time again will say like, oh, I haven't seen one of your videos in a while. YouTube isn't sharing your videos with me anymore. The only way to kind of circumvent that, this idiotic new way that YouTube is sharing videos, is to click the bell below. That way you'll be notified whenever a new Entertain the Elk video drops. So please do that extra step, click the bell, and that way you, you know you won't miss a new video whenever it comes out. And one more time, go check out Bespoke Post. They really do have really cool boxes with a lot of unique items. It's just something different besides the same old gifts that, you know, we tend to recycle time and time and time again. Just something fun and unique. Go check out bespokepost.com slash ETE20 and use my unique code ETE20 at checkout to get the discount. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.